From time to time, unemployment has been a significant problem in most societies. In the early years of the 21st century, it's been over 10% of the workforce here in Germany. In Eastern Germany, it's been much higher. It's also been very high in some parts of Central and Eastern Europe. Some economists see the answer to the problem in the hands of the government. The government's job is to increase aggregate demand. They do this by spending money on large infrastructure projects such as hospitals and roads. Here we are in Katowice, Poland's second biggest city, where there's a major road building program going on. Here in the centre of town, there's a significant investment project going on and this investment project is creating demand. So as a result of that increase in demand, output rises. When output rises, people receive incomes, bricklayers and so on. They spend their incomes. When they spend their incomes, that further increases aggregate demand. So aggregate demand rises by some multiple of the original increase in government expenditure. How do we calculate the extent to which aggregate demand rises for a given increase in government expenditure? Let's establish then the mathematical logic of the multiplier. Now in order to do this there are three things we have to be clear about. We're going to use Y for national output, but it will also stand for national income because national income is the income earned in producing output. Second thing we need to be clear about is that all income of households is either spent or saved. So if we call the proportion of household income spent little c, and the proportion of household income saved little s, then c plus s must equal 1. And the third thing to be clear about, the demand for output comes partly from consumers and varies with income, and partly from firms for investment purposes, which we're going to assume to be independent of income, or as we say, autonomous. OK, let's look at the equations that we get in our little simple model to help us to understand the logic of the multiplier. If we represent the economy algebraically, we get y is equal to c plus i. That is to say, national income or national output is equal in equilibrium to consumption expenditure plus investment expenditure. If the economy is in balance, the amount of output that's being produced will have to be equal to the demands from consumers plus the demands from firms in the form of investment. That's true when the economy is in equilibrium. C, consumption, is some part of income. So we can write C equals little c y. Remember that y can be income or output. Now let's establish the multiplier. y is equal to, we can replace our c term by cy, plus i. Now what we need, for reasons we'll see shortly, is for y and i terms to be on one side and the c term on the other side. So if we subtract cy from each side, we've got y minus cy equals i. Or to put that another way, y 1 minus c equals i. If that step isn't obvious, look at the term y 1 minus c and multiply the brackets out. y times 1 is 1y and y times c is little cy. So y1 minus c is the same thing as y minus cy. Okay, now we divide each side by 1 minus c. 
So that gets rid of 1 minus c on the left-hand side, and we have y equals i over 1 minus c. Now let's divide by i, and we have y over i equals 1 over 1 minus c. Now this is true for levels of national income. It'll be true for changes also. So we can say the change in y over the change in i is equal to 1 over 1 minus c. And that term, 1 over 1 minus c, is the multiplier. Now we can illustrate the effect of the multiplier with a little example. Suppose c is equal to 3 quarters. Consumers spend 3 quarters of what they receive in income. And let's suppose investment, which might be by private households or by government, but investment increases on, say, roads by 400 millions. What's going to happen to national income? Well, the change in y over the change in i, which is assumed now to be 400, is equal to 1 over 1 minus, and we're assuming that little c, remember, is 3 quarters. So that term, 1 over 1 minus 3 quarters, is equal to 1 over a quarter, which equals 4. So multiply each side by 400, and we have the change in y is equal to 1600. So the rise in national income is not the extent of the increase in demand in the form of investment. It's four times that amount. That term, 4, that is 1 over 1 minus c, is the multiplier. Output increases by a multiple of the original increase in autonomous demand. Putting the same thing in a slightly different way, we can say that the change in y over the change in i is equal to 1 over 1 minus c, but remember that c plus s, that is to say little c plus little s, is equal to 1. So an alternative way of expressing it is to say that the change in y over the change in i is equal to 1 over s, where s, remember in our example, is a quarter. Consumers spend three quarters of their income and save one quarter. So again, the multiplier can be expressed as 1 over s, which equals 4. That's the logic of the multiplier. It tells us when there is an increase in autonomous demand, output will rise by some multiple of that. And we can see that if we understand basic algebra.